or we could become. Yeah. Yeah. My Lords, it's a pleasure to follow the uh, powerful contribution of the noble Lord Lord Cashman and to join the universal thanks for Lord Bragg for securing this debate and introducing it so powerfully. I think it's worth focusing on the noble Lord's key message, that the arts feed us. They are our physical, emotional and intellectual benefit. Although I think rather than cake, we should be looking at this as bread, as one of the staffs of life. Now, I want to focus on the importance of that staff being available to all communities, as did the Right Reverend Bishop of St Albans, noting, as the bishop did, the near collapse of provision in Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire, particularly the collapse of the opportunities for people to participate in the arts. For, for the Green Party, that has to be the foundation of arts policy, not focusing on what people purchase, views of a Hollywood movie or blockbuster exhibitions, but what they participate in, what they are able to jointly co-create. And we know that it is of great public interest in the best sense. To take an example noble lords may be aware of, there's currently a giant furore around Suffolk County, County Council's decision to deliver a 100% cut to core arts funding. Uh, it's even penetrated the London-centric mainstream media bu bubble. Now, we have to acknowledge the long-term impact of more than a decade of government austerity on local government. I declare my position as a vice president of the Local Government Association. The foundational blame lies here in Westminster. But the decision locally is still indefensible and has since, to a degree, been reversed, although the outcome is yet to be finalised. But a partial climb down by the county council leaves hugely valued local institutions such as Dance East and the new Wolsey Theatre without the kind of certainty that's needed to securely continue to deliver hugely valued community services. The mother of 15-year-old Jack, who has autism, told Channel 4 how much a weekly drama class had brought him out of his shell. I absolutely love them, Jack told Channel 4's reporter. Now, noble lords will be aware that I work across many issues in your lordship's house. In health debates, we often hear from the government that it understands and values the contribution uh, being made to increasing health by social prescribing, enabling people to access dance and theatre and other creative arts as a way of caring for people, improving their health and their lives. Yet here we have Ipswich, where a third of children are living in poverty, faces a collapse of such provision, something that can only put more costs onto our struggling NHS taking away the essential food to set children up for a healthy life. Now, finally, uh, I have to step away from my main focus to comment on the contribution of the noble Lord Lord Vasey, not currently in his place, and to disagree in the strongest terms with the noble Lord about the relationship between BP and the British Museum. As the campaign group Culture Unstained said, this is completely indefensible. Green washing, art washing, they do not clean the hands of companies like BP, but they do damage the reputation, the standing, the world's view of institutions that enable that effort at green washing. And I comment further on the noble lord's embrace of philanthropy. Well, relying as a foundation uh, on philanthropy to keep our institution going means a tiny number of people get a big say in the direction of those institutions, the subjects those institutions tackle, the kind of work they support. How much better to ensure that big companies and rich individuals pay their taxes and we all democratically decide how to allocate the funding? If we want arts that embrace, show the way to change, rather than simply seeking to reinforce the status quo, we need democratically decided funding for the arts. Yeah. Yeah. My Lords, I join in thanking the noble Lord, Lord Bragg for securing